same lines, but let me use Billy real quick. So what we're doing now is um, we're going to transition from pre we're going to still use pressure points, okay? Everything we're doing is stacking on what we've done before. So we started off with two basic movements, brush check counter and the hairbrush, right? From there we went into um, a little bit with the knife so you could understand how it related. And then we started working from this position. Now, can we do a brush check counter from this? Yeah, you betcha. Right? Can we do our hairbrush from this? Yes. Do I always have to come up the middle? No. Do I always have to come out to the right? No. Okay. This leads us to a concept that you will not find in many arts directly, directly taught. The concept is called hyperfunction versus hypofunction. This is uh, specifically pertinent to the study of pressure point work, sistema, and jujitsu. Traditional jujitsu is based on this concept of hypofunction. In other words, his joint bends like this. Right? So when I apply a joint lock, I'm going to go against the way the joint wants to bend. Does that make sense? That's traditional orthodox jiu-jitsu. Even small circle jiu-jitsu, which I'm a big fan of, which focuses on manipulating the small joints of the body. Right? Even these movements are based on the concept of hyperfunction or hypofunction, going against the joint. But there's another way, especially for us smaller people, that we can begin to manipulate the body. That's called hypo, hyperfunction. His joint wants to bend this way. His shoulder relax, wants to move this way. Right? So if I just start moving with the joint the way it wants to go, all the rest of the joints of the body begin to recruit, and he finds himself being catapulted to the floor by his own momentum. Okay? So the first thing we want to start to play with in terms of hypofunction is studying the way the joints bend. So if he's choking, he's in this position here, right? We can open him with our yang meridian technique, or we can go in with the yin meridian technique. The yin meridian technique that we started teaching you is a hyperfunction technique. We know that his joint wants to bend, right? If I try to go against the joints, the rest of his body recruits to make it strong, to reinforce the joint, right? But for some strange reason, it's, very, it's much more difficult for him to fight himself when I go with the way his joints want to bend. Okay? So I can literally just move him in different places by going the way his joints want to go. Even here. See, all I'm doing, <laughs> you didn't check that one. <laughs> all I'm doing is this is a traditional hyperfunction jujitsu technique. Joint doesn't want to bend this way. Okay? Joint does want to bend this way. Right? So again, I can, I can move the shoulder girdle. So I started with the elbow. Everybody, get, when you get it, I want you to get a partner and I want you to just have your partner relax his shoulder. I just want you to move it in a circle. Just like this. Feel that? Can you guys see this? I'm just moving. And notice how easily it moves. Notice how easily it moves, right? Then what I want you to do is just very gently move a big circle to here and bend your knees. So I'm literally just going to come up and go, ah. 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 I'll pass. <laughs> oh, move out of the way. Come over here. I'm you can make it big if you want to, right? See what happened? Be nice. I'm always nice. <laughs> All I was rolling and bend. Now, did you notice when her knees bent? When my knees bent. In other words, if I just do this, nothing happens. Because this is a connection to center too. Right? Once I make a connection, either hyperfunction, hypofunction, our centers of gravity start to communicate. They start to talk. 
And as long as I keep that connection, whatever I do with my body, her body will mirror. Okay, this is advanced Aiki. It's also Sistema. It's also Tai Chi. It's everything we do, right? You go deep enough into any real art, this is where they're taking you. Every internal martial art has some way to get you here, right? They just obfuscate it behind a thousand techniques and weird language, and maybe if you're the right ethnicity, lineage, you might get something someday, right? I was bitter, but I'm over it now, okay? <laughs> so again, the whole idea is every joint has a natural range of motion. The more, jo the more we work with the way the joint wants to work, the more of the other joints start to work in unison. If I go against the way the joint wants to work, she actually braces all those other joints against it and creates this, this locked structure, right? She had, the moment I did that, she got real strong, didn't you? You could feel it, right? That structure, or that, that reverse support, is where you have to have really superior technique and a whole lot more muscle to get a joint lock to work. Because the body, the body is designed to defend against this, unless you cheat, right? And when I say cheat, we use pressure points, which release the muscle, or we create that connection and we go where the joints want to go. See, when I went to this, he, he, bra he braced. See him brace? Which means all of his joints want to go what direction? Against the flow of my technique, right? That's where they wanted to go, right? So the whole idea, as you get deeper into it, is you have to have the sensitivity. It's like dancing, like, literally like ballroom dancing. To feel where his body wants to go, to feel where it's looking for support, and do something else. But for right now, get your partner, work with the shoulder girdle, right? Just practice these little circles and notice how their body, their shoulders and their hips align and misalign. When you feel like you've got a pretty good understanding of that, as you reach a point where the shoulders are a little bit out of alignment, bend your knees. Got it? Go play. You guys like this? This is kind of fun? All right. Now I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to turn you all into like Ike Masters overnight. Come here, DW. <laughs> You're turning the barrel, brother. Should I have my glasses on? Or? Uh, it really doesn't matter. Okay. I actually might want to take them off. Okay. Please. Jeff, can you get the camera? <laughs> now, again, a lot of what I do is about escaping. Okay, by the way, as you're going through these movements, especially like the, 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 brush, trap, gra the brush grab strike and the, the hairbrush, do you see lots of places where you can just rain hell on the bad guy if you want to? Have you seen all these places where you can just hurt them? But remember, the vast majority of us just want to get away. Right. right? So one of the things that the most important things we can do is get them on the ground and leave. So a lot of what I'm teaching you is designed specifically for that. Put the, hit them with the earth. Maybe tenderize the meat a little bit before you put it in the oven. I'm the meat, right? You're the meat, right. yeah. And I'm the tenderizer. Buddy. Okay? <laughs> So you can go home. Well, I'm not training you to, to win an MMA match. I'm not training you to be the next kickboxing champion of the planet. I'm training you to go home, right? So remember, even though we're having a good time, and is everybody having a good time? Yeah. Good, because that's how you learn the best, right? At the end of the day, what's going to protect you is what you practice. Okay, I can't wave a magic wand and turn you into Bruce Lee. God, I wish I, I, wish I could do that for me, right? I've been doing this almost 40 years, and that's still ain't there yet, so. but. What I want you to understand is, everybody knows you have a spine, right? Okay, your spine has three arches. It has a cervical arch, a thoracic arch, and a lumbar arch. We're in the systemic portion, we're also working a little bit with jujitsu, but the whole idea that we want to understand when we talk about systema, and depending, doesn't really, whether it's Kadashnikov, combat systema, Vasiliev systema, um, there's, all, there's a million forms of systema. One of the primary principles that we want to understand is this concept of breathing alignment, structure, relaxation, movement, okay? When the body is in alignment, when the shoulders, the hips, the head are all relatively plain, stay right there. I'll get my tool. 
excuse me while I whip this out. No blazing saddle stands here. Right. So we have the head or the eye level, right? We have the shoulders, we have the hips, we have the knees. As long as all these things kind of line up like boxcars, life is good. Okay, we're strong, right? So if I were to punch DW in the stomach, if all he did, one, one little caveat, okay. is I want you to take your tailbone and kind of like the tailbone of the coccyx is like the tip of the end of a fist, I just want you to coil it up so that you feel a little bit of tension go up through your abdomen. Not super tight, you should be able to still be a breathe through your stomach or to your abdomen, but still have a, a little bit of a tension there. Okay. okay? So I'm not going to hit him hard, but it's going to hit suck, just so you know. Suck is a technical term. So as I hit him, okay, that's, that's, not a, that's a pretty solid hit, all right? The reason he's taken that pretty well, A, because I'm not hitting him hard, but still enough to move him, right? Because it's just dead weight, is because he's in structure. When the body is in structure, there's an internal pressurization that takes place. It's called biotensegrity. Okay, it's a term coined by Buckminster Fuller way back in the day. I don't want to get into all of the distinctions and science, but just to say every part of him is like a balloon and it's spreading tension throughout his body and dissipating and balancing force. And it gives him a layer of protection. It gives him a, almost like a little bit of a bulletproof vest, a little bit. Not, not a lot, <laughs> trust me, but enough that his, he becomes significantly more tough to hurt when the shoulders, the hips, the tailbone, and the head are in alignment. So I can sit here and I can hit him pretty well, right? Sucked, right? Yeah, it sucked. Yeah. Okay. If all I do is turn his head a little bit so that there's a little bit of tension and a light hit. Oh, that's way info. That wasn't near the intensity I was hitting him with before, was it? But that went right inside, didn't yeah. it? That's the difference. When the tailbone is tucked, when the structure is in alignment, there's a surface tension here that dissipates the force throughout the structure. When the, when this, when the system is kinked, that internal pre that, that protection goes away. Okay? So whenever we're working and whenever we're defending ourselves, the, one of the fastest ways that we can A, protect ourselves and take out the other guy is distort the structure. Just move the head, move the shoulders, move the hip. Get these things out of alignment. And when we do, our hits will go in and they'll be much more powerful. Okay? The other the corollary to that as well is that, drunk down. We were working the hyperfunction concept before. Hyperfunction and the takedown work because as I move through this range of motion, I've distorted his structure. Even if, I'll, I'll exaggerate it. Okay? As you get more and more finessey at this, you won't even see the distortion. It doesn't look like there's anything there, but there is. Okay? But for, for educational purposes, I'll make it big so that you can see the distortion. Anytime you have the structure distorted, the only direction you ever need to move is down. Okay? Now, that's the nice part. If I have him here, and I know the only direction I need to move him is down, now if I hit him on the way down, or instead of pushing him, it's going to be worse. Does that make sense? Okay. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to prove this to ourselves. You're going to get a partner, and your partner is just going to stand like this with the tailbone just flexed a little bit, so there's a little bit of tension here. And all you're going to, and it's a test, not a contest. Okay? And all you're going to do is give him a little tap. You can tap him on the solar plexus if you want, but again, just keep the force the same. Right? Just let your arm just kind of swing like a screen door. Right? Then you're just going to distort the structure. You can do it by misaligning the shoulders, misaligning the hips, turning the head like I did. But when you turn the head, make sure there's a little bit of tension. It's that tension that lets us know the structure has reached its limit. Does that make sense? You don't have to go, yeah, and Linda Blair in, you know? But the whole idea is I, I want to distort this enough so that I, I know it's open. Make sense? And then give him a tap and have him report if there's a difference or not. All right? This is going to do several things. A, it's going to start to teach you a little bit about how to deal with strikes, as well as starting to get you over the fear of actually hitting someone safely. Because it's, again, it's a test, not a contest. Because I have guys, I have guys taking full, you know, full kicks to the legs, 
using these, these concepts and they're just bouncing off. Right? So the whole idea is we want to we systematically teach our body to get stronger, more mobile, but at the same time we want to use the same concepts to give us the, the, the ability to defend ourselves in the fastest amount of time. So remember, be gentle because your partner gets to go next. I know some of you guys are going to be whacking on each other. We're going to come back and then we're going to kind of integrate a little bit more of this stuff. Uh, give you one or two more pressure points, maybe some finger locks. And uh, we'll let you kind of freestyle a little bit. All right? Go play. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Give me a round of applause. Are we having fun? All right. Great. Oh, Danny, you're cheating. That's all right. Sit the camera. All right. Now, I'm going to show you how to cheat. I need some... David. So, we have big... <laughs> that was ugly, wasn't it? It's like just the little touches. I came around and tapped a couple of you, right? Jonathan, what'd you learn? Come on. I'm going to just go around. Jonathan, what'd you, what'd you, what'd you discover from this technique when we were practicing? What'd you learn? Uh, that when, when their body is distorted, it's much harder on the body. Exactly. Adnan, what'd you learn? When I change the structure of the body, I now can like do less uh, powerful front, but it's more effective. Absolutely. You turn a slit, you turn a brick into an eggshell. Right? And, and then Jonathan discovered I don't have to just hit you in the tummy, tummy to make that hurt, right? I actually can tell him. Yeah, he just got me here and turned me just a little bit and just hit me in the, the tricep. Well, actually, it's the uh, uh, trap, trapezius. The trap, and it was like, ow. Right? Because the structure conducts. Force conducts through the body, right? So now let's kind of work this a little bit. So Sistema tells us that structure is important. So we're going to work from this position. We could work from a punch or a push position where he's punching me and I come this way, right? We worked with the idea or the concept of turning the head, misaligning the structure. We're going to take that concept, we're going to go back to our pressure point work and we're going to teach you some really cool things that you can do with the head. So as the strike is coming, yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll do that one first then. Okay. So as I'm coming in here, right, I have this movement, right? I talked to you about three arches. Anytime I can compromise one of those arches, the only direction I need to move is down. So, big picture, I take his head, I take his hip, I drop it. Okay, so we have uh, do 24, which is a pressure point on the acupuncture point here. It's on the philtrum. Now, just for grins and giggles, what did we just learn about the structure? How do we how do we do, how do we break the structure? What do we have to do? Twist it. I have to misalign what? Misalign the, the head. Oh shit. Life just got sucky for him. Why? Everything's Everything's distorted, isn't it? If I want to put him down, what's the only direction I have to move? If I want to, if I break his, if I distort his structure, what is that? If I hit him, what happens? Then he gets hurt. So strong like bull, <laughs> not so much, right? So as he grabs, in this case, I come up, and that could be a hit if his head is down. I could poke him in the eyes. I could lay across the philtrum. All I want to do is just reach back. I'm gonna, maybe I want to scoot. I might even want to scoot my, my butt in a little bit and just brace his sacrum. I'm, I'm doing this with teeny touches. At full speed, it would be much uglier, right? But the whole idea is, as he comes in, boom, right? Now, where I'm touching him now, that's putting him down, these would be percussion points that would knock him out, make him see stars. So this is how I can safely practice my cue show, which is knockouts, without causing problems. So as he's... Again, he, we're working off the, the two-handed process here. So as I come up, I can distort him this way. I can brace him this way. Play with that. We'll come back and go on. Okay? Just be round of applause for me.
So if all I do is just get my body out of the way, he falls in the hole. Because he's literally, he's literally, especially in this dynamic, he's literally using me to hold himself up and doesn't realize it. So if literally, if all I do is this. Yeah, I know, <laughs> oh, they, they never try. They don't, they, never, they don't realize how much they're using you to hold themselves up. And as long as you move from anywhere else, they never realize their foundation is gone. So it's too late, they're already in free fall. The wagons! We having big fun with this? Adnan, come on out, brother. Strong like bull. I like this man. I love this man. <laughs> he makes me so jealous. I want a body like this. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, he's got some decent hair. Now, we've worked from this. And again, this is a very common energy to get, right? Whether it's MMA, judo, it's some kind of a clinch position, right? If you, the longer you stay with what we do, the more you're going to understand this concept of getting your center close. Most of you, it's just going to be Greek right now, so I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you it's important. The closer my center of gravity gets to his, the more his body does what I tell it. I'll, I'll, I'll just put, give it to you that way. What most of us do, though, because we're, we're taught to fight like big people, is the moment we, clint, we tie up like this, the butt drops back, and we try to muscle. We try to finagle for position. The problem with that is, is it's the most inefficient way for us to deliver force, especially if we're small. Okay? So, anytime, like, like I was showing, the, some people over here were doing a wrist lock. Back over a second. Do you know how to do a wrist lock? No. Uh, you know how to do a wrist lock, Jonathan, right? Do you know how to do a wrist lock? What? I know you do. Wrist lock. Oh, okay. It's just a, just a simple thing I wanted to show, yep. but just do that for now. Now, this is a, a typical hypo function lock. In other words, He's torquing my wrist, right? And if I try to go against that force, I'm going to get hurt badly. But this is how important your center of gravity is. This lock is based on two things, really. Distance from my center and going against the way the joint wants to work. If all I did was bring my center underneath it, Weird, I'm not isn't it? doing anything now. Yeah, exactly. Here's the weirdest part. Because he's using me to hold himself up and doesn't know it. Put a little more juice on it. Now, you see how he's got me out of structure, right? The moment, watch what happens when my center of gravity goes under my joint. Oh, I'm going back. Life sucks for you, doesn't it? The more connection they give, the more, the more they, they crank on it, the more connection they give me. As long as I don't try to fight the lock. If I try to muscle again, he's going to tear me a new one. Okay? Anybody who's ever been in this lock knows what I'm talking about. By the way, the fastest way to get out of it is this. But most people won't do that either. For you, the camera. He's, he's torquing on me here. Nobody ever thinks about that, right? But here again, he's got me, I'm very much out of structure, right? I have to have the poise and the presence of mind to know all I gotta do is that. Right? Beautiful. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> but that's not where we're going. But it is where, it's, it's where you'll end up eventually. The longer you stay with this, the more rapidly you'll start to understand how important this is. The masters, at the level that the masters play at, they don't even care about technique. The only thing they want is your center of gravity. The moment they make connections, especially systemically, it doesn't matter how I get there. Right? But for this now, we're working from the clinch position. So anytime we can get that center, which is right below your belly button, Get that center under his center. Or get that center to a point where just the movement causes him to spin out of control. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work the same hairbrush and the same brush grab, but we're going to do something with the head now, which involves hair manipulation of hair pressure points. So put your hands down. Put your head this way. Uh, can you all come... 
Line up, sit underneath the camera so that everybody can get this at home. So everybody sit back here, facing this way. Bend your head forward, young man. Cool dude. All right, so he's going to dip his head down. How many people here have ever seen a picture or have actually held a real skull or a model of a skull? If you looked at the skull, put your head all the way down so they can see. If you look at the skull, you'll notice right in this area, there's this little suture that goes up the center. And then off at little angles, there's little, little cracks, little wavy lines, right? Those are called cranial sutures. Up through those areas are little tiny nerves, called their motor nerves, that control the neck and the eyes. Now, they usually come up and they're kind of laying out there like this, just under the scalp. If he makes his neck nice and strong, I picked a guy with a strong neck just for this. If I push on this, not so much. <sighs> not so much. Right at the rounding of the ear, these little lines go up this way. Anytime I want the, the body or the head to go that way, I must use this quadrant. So you divide the head into quadrants and you use opposite quadrant. So if I, just, if I, if I pull him this way, that hurts, that annoys him, but he, he's not going anywhere, right? But if I take the same energy, <laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition, <laughs> right? So the whole idea now is opposite quadrant theory tells me that if I want the body to, you know, notice I'm, going, I'm using his, his body spins, it doesn't just lean off to the side, it pirouettes, right? Which is what we want again. If I want, if I, and again, I can reach around this way, right? Or I can give him a little bit of a noogie. Again, same quadrant, that way, and I'll release the neck, okay? So one of the things we can do is he's, uh, come over here real quick, just nice and slow. Slow punch comes in. So as I, no, a straight punch. As I come in this way, down he goes, home I go. Uh, hook punch, here. Right? Double push, double, double hand push. push. No, push, not punch. Push, yeah, okay. It doesn't matter if it's a two-hand attack, a punch, a choke, a hair grab, whatever you want to do. Now, let's analyze what we just did and what we know. What's his structure like? It's bad, right? What's, what's going to happen if I hit him? It's going to be really bad, right? If I just want to throw him, what do I have to do? Could I couple them up? Remember that? Right. Not too good for you, <laughs> right? I see. If he's got, a, if he's clinching on me here, right? Now let's say I hit him, right? Boom, his structure's gone. But let's say I missed. Oh shit! Okay. Again, pardon my French. So I'm here, right? Now, if he's giving me all this, I'm just holding him up. Okay. But again, if I'm here, I want to reach around, and now he's done. Because he's, it's very hard to resist that. Okay? Right. If I come here and pull, he can take that. But if I reach to the opposite quadrant, right? It's, Bad idea, right? Who did, I show, who did I show that pressure point right here on the bottom third of the SCM? There's a pressure point, stomach 10. If you want to look at it on the acupuncture charts. Primarily active when the arms are raised. You take the SCM right in front of the SCM, you divide it into thirds. So top third, middle third, bottom third. Right where the, the, the bottom third meets the middle third, straight in. So if I'm here and I have this all stretched out, Boom, right? Or boom. So the whole idea now is what we're doing is we're working on the same idea of distorting the structure. We can use our hairbrush. We can use our brush trap. Right? It's all here. Everything we worked on. 
right? Still there. So now what I want you to do is I want you to start to play with these hair points. Remember that you have to actually grab the scalp and lift like a pop top on a soda can. Because you've got you to get the scalp tight and vibrate the nerves. These, this is one of the few places in the body where you can't hit it and make it work. This nerve ending requires vibration. So when we grab, we can grab close to the scalp. He doesn't have a lot of hair here. So I would have to probably, if I really wanted to be evil, I would grab his ear. And I want to pull like, like pull starting a lawnmower. I'm doing, it, I'm doing it really gentle. By the way, how many people here do traditional kata? But block, only one? Two? In your kata, you have a, punch, you have a, you have a, a set that goes one, two, three, four, right? Yep. Now if I do that, I'm not going to do it hard. If I do that right, where's his head? Where's my punch in that form? Boom. Yeah. All the old katas are that way. Every move in every old kata was created to kill. Period. Even the, even the baby ones. It's politically incorrect, but it's the way it works. If you understand the hidden teachings behind it, if you understand biomechanics, if you understand how it all fits together, you got an art that's greater than the sum of the parts. Okay? So in, this, in the time that we have, you can work from the clinch position, you can work from a single or a, punching, a slow punching position and find these points, distort the structure, Deliver maybe one, one light hit, bend your knees, take them down. And as you go through this in real slow motion, Tai Chi slow, play with it. If you feel where you can maybe stick in one of those, one of those little shoulder bumps, right, where you roll the shoulder and drop them down, put that in there. But go nice and slow, right? Play with it. Make it yours. You have the hair points, you have the philtrum, you have the, the, the cervical arch, and all of that, and you only need two moves to get into them. Right? The rest is up to you. Go play. Give me a round of applause for Adnan. <laughs>